Throughout history, there have been people who have committed some of the most heinous crimes fathomable. For those crimes, they have been convicted and sentenced to death. Welcome to Death Row Executions, where we take a look into the lives of society's worst offenders. And now, your host, Air. First of all, I'm very sad that this child died. But when I first saw you in there, I knew something was wrong. You know something is wrong. No, sir, I don't. You know something is wrong. No, sir, I don't. You can't. You gonna hold it like that? Yeah, I can hold it like this. We better that way. So, uh, yeah, because I guess we're gonna be yeah. moving around. So. Okay, you ready? Mm-hmm. Say what. Melissa, okay. Today's date is 2-18-2007. It is 3 a.m. We are here at the Harlander Police Department. I am here with Melissa Lucio. My name is Victor Escalon with the Texas Rangers. I am also in this room is Officer Harlingen Police Detective Javier Villarreal. Show, lay her down and show me how you would spank her. But it was it like, was it one time? Well, it several times. Several times. Show me how. But show me the same force you would use. With your right or left hand? Left, right hand. Would you be standing up or sitting down? Both. Me? How, how would you do it when you're sitting down? Show me how you would do it. But, I mean, the way you actually did it. I just get it over. Oh, I just bent her real hard on her back. Well, do it real hard like you, like you would do it. But the way you would do it. That's the way I would do it. I remember it, what I just said when, when John would come over and um, play with Mariah, Mar Mar because Mariah was scared, she would stay stiff, but you can tell she wanted to play with us. Um, and when my brother would leave, my mom would pinch her. All the time, my mom would pinch her and tell her, go sit under the bed or go sit on the corner of the bed, put a pillow over your head or turn around and we would be all be playing or um, like joking around. And Mariah would look up, and my mom would go to her and push her head down in the bed. I think I love my mom because we're supposed to love our mom. But I don't think I care about my mom. Melissa Lucille was born on July 18, 1968, in Lubbock, Texas. She grew up in a strict Catholic Mexican-American family in a poverty-stricken area. Starting at the age of just six years old, Melissa started getting taken advantage of by multiple family members whenever her mother would leave the house. She was timid, scared, and never spoke up or out about what was happening to her on a consistent basis. Melissa continued to deal with this pain and hurt up until her teenage years, but one day she decided that it was time for an escape. Melissa was 16 years old when she met a young man and decided to marry him, thinking that he would be able to save her from all of her troubles. Melissa's mother consented to the marriage, and Melissa ended up dropping out of school in the 11th grade. Unfortunately for Melissa, she moved from one bad environment to another, and her husband frequently drank, sold drugs, and would verbally and physically assault her. Her sister-in-law by the name of Sylvia introduced her to cocaine that year, and Melissa became an addict. Melissa and her first husband had five children together, but after some time, their relationship crumbled and Mr. Lucio moved to Houston, Texas, leaving his wife and children behind. After being abandoned by her husband, Melissa was left to fend for herself and often depended on free meals in order to take care of her children. Fast forward to the year 2007, Melissa was now in a new relationship with Robert Antonio Alvarez, a man that she called her husband even though they were not legally married. The couple had seven children together, with the youngest being a little girl named Mariah. In total, Melissa had 12 children, but she was pregnant with twins. Three of her children were actually taken away from Melissa due to multiple complaints. It was reported that those children were homeless and relying on school for food and hygiene needs. There were also reports that Melissa's house always smelled like marijuana. Mariah was a toddler who had just recently learned how to walk, but because of one of her feet facing inwards, she was prone to falling. 
It was Saturday at around 7 o'clock at night on February 17, 2007, when something happened to Mariah, leaving the family no choice but to call emergency. When paramedics arrived at the apartment, one paramedic by the name of Nestor entered the apartment first and noticed that no one was near Mariah to offer any assistance or comfort as she was lying on her back with no pulse. Nestor also noticed that Melissa did not seem distressed and wrote down in his report that her behavior was quote-unquote so far out of the ordinary. Melissa told paramedics that Mariah fell down a flight of stairs, but once Mariah was taken to the hospital emergency room and pronounced dead, doctors noticed that there were other bruises on her body, including a bite mark and an arm that had been broken about two to seven weeks before her death. The emergency room physician said that it was one of the worst cases he had ever seen, and on his report, he noted that there was no sign of head trauma. Melissa was first questioned for a few hours. She maintained that Mariah fell, but claimed that she fell two days prior to her actual death. When investigators brought up the other wounds, she claimed that her older children could have done it, but it was not her. An autopsy, however, was conducted on February 19, 2007, and the forensic pathologist concluded that Mariah died from blunt force trauma to the head. The result of the injury would not have been from a fall, but an object or a fist, according to the pathologist. Did everybody love Mariah? I can say yes. I can't really say yes. I mean, it's... If, if everybody loved Mariah, I mean, I don't think the, the abusing would have been happening to Mariah. I love Mariah. I don't, I don't, I can't say that my sister Alexandra didn't love, did love Mariah. I know she was really jealous of Mariah. She was aggressive towards Mariah. And Mariah was scared of Alex. She trusted them to like to um, keep an eye on us. So like if she was like washing clothes or like cleaning the house, um, cause she was always she was always cleaning something. Um, like they would watch us. I guess Alex, like she like I don't, I don't want to say like she didn't like her, but I guess um, she had a vendetta like, against her. Um, like whenever she did bad, like, you know, like she would pinch her, but that's it. It was me, my mom, Selena, and Alex. And I'm like, Alex, I'm gonna ask you a question. I go, did you ever, I told Selena, did you ever hit Mariah? And she's like, yes. So then I asked, I asked Alex, did you ever hit Mariah? And then I and she said yes. And I go, how, Alex? How would you hit Mariah? She goes, I punched her in the face. And then my mom exploded. How could you do that? She was only a baby. And I had to tell my mom to be quiet and get out of here. We're not here to uh, to get mad or, or to ask. To Why? To We're here knowledge. to get the truth out of her. So I had to tell my mom to leave and they didn't, she didn't talk. In. And then Selena said, well, my mom, my mom and my dad were always doing drugs. They would lock themselves in the bathroom. I'm like, perfect, Selena. That's all you had to say. Why was that going to get you in trouble? You were a child taking care of another child, which should have been your mom's responsibility. And Robert, that's all you had to say. But your mom ain't guilty of something that you and Alex did. Alexandra. I know she did not love Mariah for nothing. She was always roaming with Mariah. Um, there was one time where it was Selena and Alex, and then Mariah was in the middle of them. They were sitting on the floor. We didn't have couches or chairs to sit on. So they were doing their homework, and then... Um, I remember Mariah um, crying for something. Like, I think she wanted to get up or something, and then, um, Alex didn't let her. And I think she tried to get up, and then Alex 
picked up her head and banged it real hard on the floor. No, I don't believe that it was an accident. I believe that Alex, and even from her own mouth to me, yes, I did it. I pushed her. It wasn't an accident. I believe that Alex had helped over and over and over with all of the children. And I believe that she was just, she was a teenager. She was wild as a West Texas wind. And I believe that she deliberately and intentionally pushed Mariah so that she didn't have to change any more diapers or fix any more bottles. Melissa was questioned by investigators again for about five hours, and she told them that she was unaware of the bruises that were mentioned in the autopsy, and interrogators felt that she was hiding the truth. Some believe that Melissa was just tired because not only was she pregnant with twins, but she was coping with the fact that her youngest daughter had just died. Five hours of denying killing Mariah, investigators showed Melissa another photo of her daughter and she said, I wish it was me. I guess I did it. And with that, the interrogation was over. Melissa was arrested and convicted of capital murder. While being locked up and awaiting her trial, Melissa gave birth to her twins, but they were quickly given up for adoption. Once trial began, one of the interrogators, Texas Ranger Escalon, took to the stand. State prosecutors were now questioning him. Now, officer, as you went in, you waited for a pause before you went in and you introduced yourself. Yes, sir, I did. Can you describe to the jury how you go about doing that? Well, my initial observation, that's when the investigation starts, is when I walked into the room and I see the investigators interviewing the suspect. I'm just observing right now, trying to soak it all in and see what we have and try to get a better idea about this lady. And I observe her, how she's answering these questions, her demeanor, how she's standing. All of that is telling me it's like a picture. Almost I'm observing everything and that is already feeding me. That's already telling me what I'm dealing with, okay? And then I see the investigators and I'm just making note. I'm making note, you know? Okay, this is what I have. What type of demeanor would you describe her having? When I walked in, she was not making eye contact with the investigator. She had her head down. So right there and then I knew she did something and she was ashamed of what she did and she had a hard time admitting to officers what had occurred. That's what crossed my mind, and I knew she was beat. I knew when I say she was beat, she was giving up. She wants to tell because she's giving that slouched appearance, you know? I did it. I've given up. I need to interview her, visit with her a little more. That's what I sensed. And I get that because of my experience in law enforcement and my experience in interviewing people. Every time it's pretty much similar in demeanor, in people, and that's what I've experienced. Have you ever had other types of experiences in your experience as a trooper and investigator in interviewing people? That's one of the most common clues you would call that you see somebody with their head down and like their shoulders are slouched forward and they won't look at you. They're hiding, hiding the truth. Escalon also testified that Melissa told him that she and only she spanked or hit Mariah. Some of the things Melissa said she would do if Mariah acted out was pinch her genital area, grab her arm, and she also bit her twice for no reason while brushing her hair. When asked why, she said that she just did it. She claimed that she spanked Mariah day after day, and on the day that Mariah died, Mariah was sick, but she was afraid to take Mariah to the hospital because of her bruises. She claimed that Mariah had a difficult time eating, and she also had a hard time breathing. Every time she tried to feed Mariah, Mariah would lock her teeth, and the coroner, Dr. Farley, testified that that behavior was consistent with blunt force trauma to the head. Prosecutors learned from Dr. Farley that Mariah had bite marks, over 100 bruises, a recently broken arm, was spanked, and they believed that being hit in the head would not be excluded as a form of punishment. The state also let the court know that Melissa was previously in prison for driving under the influence and she had multiple disciplinary violations in the county jail for reasons such as fighting with other inmates, possessing contraband, being disrespectful with a guard, and for the unauthorized communication with another person. The state also brought to the stand Estrada, a Child Protective Services caseworker. He testified that Mariah was born on September 6, 2004, and soon after she was born, CPS took Mariah and all of Melissa's other children out of the home for neglect and they were placed in foster care. Melissa was able to visit her children while they were in foster care, and on November 21, 2006, the children were able to return to Melissa's house. 
Estrada testified that Mariah did not have a close relationship with her mother because of the fact that she was taken away so close to her birth date. Estrada also testified that CPS had been involved with Melissa in 1995, 1996, 1998, 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003, and 2004. There were various reasons CPS was involved and some of Melissa's children were born with drugs in their system. The defense had evidence stacked against them and they responded to the prosecution bringing up her offenses while being locked up and they claimed they were only minor offenses. When it came to responding about the CPS caseworkers' claims, the defense argued that it was their fault for returning the children to Melissa if it was a bad environment. In the closing arguments, the defense team said, Now, in the opening remarks that we made in the beginning of the trial after you were all seated here, I told you my client is not up for mother of the year. I told you that my client is guilty of injury to a child. She is, and she admitted that. The question here before you is whether or not on February 17, 2007, Melissa Lucio intentionally and knowingly killed Mariah Alvarez. That's the issue. That's the issue. Not whether she beat her, not whether she broke her arm, not whether she's a lousy mother or didn't provide for her children. That's not an issue. The issue is whether or not she killed Mariah on the 17th of February 2007. They also tried to argue that Melissa was only a danger to her children and life without parole would be a better sentence than death because she would not hurt anyone in prison. Melissa was sentenced to death in 2008 and sent to death row in Texas. There have been appeals over the years, but Melissa's execution date is set for this year on April 27, 2022. If she is executed, she will have been the first Hispanic woman executed in the state of Texas. Some appeals have been over the evidence presented in trial not being tested. Police searched the apartment where Melissa and her family lived, and they took pictures of cocaine and other drug paraphernalia in the house. Police detective Rebecca Cruz was in charge of all of the evidence in the case, and she admitted hair and fingernail clippings from Melissa, but it was never sent into the lab for testing. The drugs that were in the images were also never sent in for testing. Question. Does it matter that the drugs were not tested if the drugs had nothing to do with how or why Mariah died? If she killed Mariah and drugs weren't even part of her defense, why should it matter? There are many people in support of Melissa and some who believe she is innocent. Some think that her confession was not really a confession and that she is covering up for one of her other children. Melissa has recently agreed to be a part of a documentary and she still claims that she is innocent and that interrogators forced her to admit to something she didn't do. In the interview, she said, I'm not that cruel to my kids. Don't you think that in some way that seems like she admits that she was cruel, but just not that cruel? If she is taking care of a toddler and cleaning her, she would see what was going on with her body. So even if it wasn't you who was responsible for all of the bruises, wouldn't you do your best to protect your youngest if someone else was hurting them? Wouldn't you get whoever was causing the bruises to get in trouble? Poor Mariah was not protected. A lot of people say that during Melissa's interrogation, she seemed fake, but I could not imagine being pregnant and interrogated for six hours. It would be interesting to see her demeanor from an interview during trial time or her earlier years in prison. It's so sad that she was given another chance and her kids were returned to her and her youngest was just taken away that quick. My last question is, do you think there should be a limit when it comes to that many reports involving CPS? Let me know what you guys think of this story in the comments below.